Hello everyone, welcome to Vistas Learning. Vistas Learning is an e-learning platform which provides variety of courses from standard 1 to standard 12 on variety of subjects. And here I am, uh, you already know me, I am Mainu Kalita. I am your geography teacher and today we'll be discussing the chapter number 8. India and power, sorry, India, mineral and power resources. Now, I have already taken the part one of this chapter. This is the part two. This is from standard 10. So, before I dive into the chapter, there's one point that I need to clarify to all of you. Uh, is that in the previous class what happened there was a slight mistake in the slide in the names of the districts so this was the previous slide in the previous class slide where there was some mismatch in the name of the districts of that of Maharashtra and that of Chhattisgarh so this was the mistake in the study note I have already uploaded the correct one so uh, this is the wrong slide the correct one is this one so we know for the largest production of bauxite for bauxite i am telling you the names of the districts were little uh, mistaken for maharashtra it is ratnagiri kolapur thana satara and for chhattisgarh it is bilaspur turk surguja and raigarh i hope it is clear to all of you uh, a I really want to apologize from my side because there was uh, this mistake in the names of the districts but however I have clarified this I hope it is clear to all of you mistakes can happen from anyone I accept my mistakes so please uh, accept my apology moving forward today we will discuss about a very interesting uh, mineral which is known as a mica now, why is mica very interesting is because mica is not just one mineral, it is actually a group of many minerals. Now, what happens this group of minerals, different minerals, they come together, they, they uh, share uh, some physical uh, properties and chemical properties are quite similar to each other. So, what happens these minerals, they come together and they form mica now what is mica actually it is a non-metallic mineral and what is it made of it is actually a it is actually made of silicates what is silicates in chemistry you have already learned that silicates uh, in chemistry what to say is uh, any form of uh, anionic substance okay anionic means minus uh, more number of electrons is there that means so what happens is any number of sorry any anionic substance which consists of both silicate and that of oxygen is known as sorry silicon and that of oxygen is known as silicates now mica is a mineral which is majorly consisting of this silicates now one very important property of silicates is that these silicates can be made into very very thin and transparent sheet on the slide you can see the picture of mica which is very uh, which is made into very thin transparent sheet now apart from that one thing that uh, distinguishes mica from uh, other minerals or metals or non-metals you can say is uh, of its physical uh, properties like it is uh, it comes in various uh, colors from white to red green black to even colorless now white is uh, usually the color in which mica generally comes in and apart from that the luster is either it's pearly it's opaque or it's uh, vitreous well, what is the meaning of vitreous vitreous means it is a uh, sort of uh, metallic light in um, metallic like in appearance now one uh, property that i want all of you to uh, focus on about mica is it is a very very good electrical insulator as well as a very good thermal conductor isn't that wow right that's wow because it's a very good insulator as well as it's a very good thermal conductor isn't it uh, a little unique or it's different right but actually it is not why because mica is not a metal 
So if it is a good insulator, then it makes sense because it is a non-metal. What happens in non-metals is that the free electrons are not there. So even though the heat is getting passed on, the current does not. That's the reason why mica is a bad conductor of electricity, but a very good conductor of heat. Here I've written, it's a good thermal conductor, not electric conductor. It's a thermal conductor. Thermal means heat conductor. Whereas it is a bad conductor of electricity. Therefore, it is known as a good electrical insulator. I hope till here it's clear. So this wow property is actually very, very interesting, right? It's interesting. Now, so moving forward, we'll talk about the uses of mica. So where mica is generally used, it is in everyday life, it is used uh, you will see principal use of mica is generally in uh, walls. So what happens is if there is uh, cracks in the wall, okay, uh, something is uneven, what happened? Uh, you put joints even, right? You have heard of joint cement. So in the picture, in the slide, on the slide, you can see a picture of joint cement is given. So this joint cement, it majorly consists of mica. So what mica does is mica helps in um removing these cracks how by uh putting it a paste of a putting like uh, material over it so what it does it it gives a smoother consistency on the wall and other uses are in paint industry it is used as pigment extender then in electricity electronics and electric uh, appliances that i've already mentioned is since mica is a very good heat conductor but a bad conductor of electricity so where it can be used it is used in heaters right so that more of heat is generated and uh, the conduction of electricity is less so as that we do not get electrified so what happens is it is used as insulators in electric motors and generator armatures and dielectrics in capacitors I'm sure you have learned in your science classes and your physics classes what is capacitors, why is it used and why in capacitors dielectrics are used. So what dielectrics does in capacitors is it reduces the electric field. So who does that? It is done by the non-metallic mineral which is known as mica. See mica has so many advantages and apart from that it is used in electronics as well already said that is in telephone and wireless communications and in transport moving forward we'll discuss where mica is distributed in india so in india the largest producer of mica is andhra pradesh andhra pradesh is a state which has which produces the maximum amount of mica and coming second followed by andhra pradesh is rajasthan so for your exams you might they might ask you to point out the states or the districts uh, where mica are found in india so i have even shown on the map to give you the idea the states where mica are produced and the districts so mainly the states are andhra pradesh then Rajasthan and then Jharkhand. In Jharkhand, which are the districts? It, it is Hazaribagh, Dhanbad, Palmao, Ranchi, and Singhbhum. These are the districts in Jharkhand where mica is produced. Apart from Jharkhand, mica is also produced in Bihar. On the map, it is very clear. See, Bihar, Jharkhand, then on the west, it is Rajasthan, and then on the south east, it is. Uh, Andhra Pradesh, all right, and Andhra Pradesh is the largest producer of mica. Now, what happens is Andhra Pradesh, these states are producing a large amount of mica, all right, and so what happens? It makes India, in fact, the larger producer of mica, and India is also exporting a lot of mica to other countries. But nowadays what has happened is a lot of synthetic mica has come into the industry, into the market and these synthetic mica are replacing this natural mica and so India is losing its market, its commercial value in terms of mica production and export. So we are done with mica 
and now we'll discuss one very interesting topic which is the power resources we'll discuss what are the major power resources that are found in India now power resources coming to power resources what does power resources do so power resources are those research resources which helps in generation of energy see on the slide I've given a picture of Superman so what from where does Superman gets his energy he gets his energy from the Sun Superman is a very famous i think it's a dc comic superhero right comment on the comment section if he's from dc or is from marvel anyway so superman is from the planet called krypton so superman even though he's from the planet from krypton when he comes to the earth to save people he needs power he needs energy and from where he gets his energy he gets from the sun so sun is one of the primary source of energy or uh, primary so a resource of energy which is exploited which is needed for uh, gen uh, various purposes or generation of energy but apart from sun energy or solar energy there are other energies power resources that India as a country is dependent on and we'll discuss further now why, why these power resources is important it is important for the economic development of the country right to improve your standard of living isn't it if there is no electricity in the home there is no water how will you work right you cannot work earlier yeah, there was no electricity uh, it was very difficult for people to work at night but now because of electricity people can work at night and not even at night we need electricity we need appliances which can generate heat even in the daytime right you already know the applications of uh, power resources why it is needed it is needed for development of various industries uh, from agriculture to commerce transport communications um, yeah, right overall for overall economic development we need power resources now in the next slide I have made a table for your uh, clarity what are the type of power resources and um, its examples how it is divided and on which power resources India is majorly uh, dependent on. So power resources basically is of two types which is conventional and non-conventional. Meaning of conventional is uh, traditional or something which is very common something you which you will uh, opt for uh, generally you will opt for so that's how conventional is defined as now conventional resources is also known as non-renewable resources why because conventional resources are those resources which have a limited amount in the nature that means they have an expiration date they can get expired these resources if over exploited can even uh, get extinct from the earth that's the reason why it is known as non-renewable they cannot be renewed but they are also known as conventional why because it is the more general one or the ones which we generally go for that's the reason why it is known as conventional resources now in conventional resources you can again uh, make uh, two divisions which is commercial and non-commercial now what happens is uh, in commercial is uh, those conventional or non-renewable resources which are uh, existing in large scale now like for example coal or petroleum natural gases these are used by a very big proportion of people in uh, both in rural and in urban areas but coming to non-commercial one like for example forest ward or uh, cow dung it is only seen in uh, patches in some area mainly in rural area that's the reason why these are non-commercial that is uh, they cannot uh, fulfill the needs of a, a larger mass so coming to non-conventional these are non-conventional because these are not very traditional these are something which are new with coming of technologies we have learned to exploit resources which uh, otherwise are present in uh, uh, no limit it is limitless it is present limitlessly in on earth and so with the advent of technology we have learned to exploit even these resources like what happens in solar energy earlier only plants can take directly solar energy they do photosynthesis they make their food 
we humans we cannot do that we are heterotrophs we are dependent on plants or other foods we are carnivores we are dependent on animals but now we can take or exploit the solar energy or wind energy so but we do it for other purposes uh, we will get to know for like generation of electricity or for heat and many others so for non-conventional these are known as renewable resources why because you can keep renewing it you can keep using it for a uh, any amount of time with um, there is no problem of over exploitation or finishing these resources so the examples of non-conventional or um, renewable resources are solar wind tidal geothermal then uh, hydroelectricity right so at first we'll discuss one of the major conventional or non-renewable resource in india which is majorly used for many uh, purposes is that of coal so coal what exactly is coal coal is actually a fossil fuel now what is a fossil fuel any substance like uh, organic substance uh, plant origin or even uh, uh, organic substance what happens when over the years they are they are dead they decompose they come so on the picture it is very clear they are dead decomposed over the years they get uh, deposited on the earth layers they are on the very uh, lower surface of the earth they are getting deposited and over the years various reactions takes place and uh, in a huge uh, or a very long after a very long period of uh, time these are converted into coal due to very high temperature because you know on the earth surface below the earth surface three layers are there right uh, like uh, crust mantle and core and the below layers uh, the layers which are at the below of the crust surface these are very hot because lava magma are present on those layers so when these organic matter gets deposited over the years and um, various uh, factors or parameters like uh, temperature and pressure high temperature and pressure acts on it they get converted to this fossil fuel to this uh, fossil or uh, resource which is known as coal and which we humans have very um, properly learned to uh, exploit it or to use it now the coal has so many uses even though it is black in color it is given the term of a diamond like diamond it is very uh, precious it has got a uh, it has got its important it has got its very high value that's the reason why coal is also known as black diamond even uh, there was one uh, very uh, good movie named uh, black diamond that i have watched so if you guys want to uh, know about coal um, uh, so you can watch this movie called black diamond where leonardo caprio was uh, start so now moving forward we'll discuss what are the types of coal the uh, coal that are found now basically what happens there are three types of coals one is carboniferous gondwana and third is tertiary but sadly in india what happens the carboniferous coal is not found in india we only see the gondwana and the tertiary coal deposits now in these uh, two types of coal the gondwana coal is considered to be uh, more useful or more significant why first reason is because it is more old now i'm sure some of you or uh, most of you have heard about uh, gondwana what is gondwana it was a very it's a prehistoric or it's a very early uh, land form earlier what happened uh, uh, the world as we see today seven continents they were not present there was only one large mass of land and then it got drifted away it was uh, then what gondwana land was created right you all have studied uh, in uh, other classes about uh, drifting of uh, the land how gondwana was created so the coal deposits which are found in the gondwana land are much older than that of the tertiary coal deposits it is 250 million years old so these all uh, coal are more significant or more important why because it is or more better quality than that of tertiary coal deposits because it is free of moisture but it does contain sulfur and phosphorus so what happens in carbon for this coal it is free of moisture free of sulfur and phosphorus in tertiary coal uh, 
what happens it contains sulfur and phosphorus and it also contains moisture but in gondwana it contains some amount of sulfur and phosphorus but the moisture content is not there now these are the factor which uh, pulls down the quality of coal and that's the reason why gondwana coal which is having uh, no moisture content makes it a uh, better quality of coal than that of tertiary coal deposits now coal is used for variety of purposes you have seen in uh, various movies you have read in books in tv shows you have seen why coal is used for like earlier it is also used for running railways steam engines were there now for electricity purposes we use coal so apart from these coal also produces many by products like ammonia coal tar coal gas benzoyl naphtha sulfur a lot of uses are there see even sulfur can be extracted from coal so apart from that coal is also used as raw materials it is used in production of dyes plastic synthetic fiber rubber etc so we have seen uh, a lot of uses of coal the different types of coal that are found in india and now we'll see the distribution now in your books it is given that india is the third largest producer of coal all right but uh, it is a little doubtful because um, india is actually the second largest producer of coal and not third but in your books it is given third largest producer so for your exam exams please write third largest producer of coal in india but uh, just to give you the correct information i'm telling you it is actually that is what i have read is that coal is uh, india is actually the second largest producer of coal now can any one of you tell me which is which is that country which is the largest producer of coal now where in india coal is found it is found in different uh, states on the slides i have given you the map where coal is found it is majorly found in jharkhand chatisgarh odisha maharashtra madhya pradesh telangana and west bengal now these are the states where gondawana coal are found apart from that in the northeastern side in assam meghalaya and nagaland also coal are found but in these states the coal that is found is tertiary coal deposits moving forward we'll now discuss uh, yeah we'll now discuss about petroleum which is another fossil fuel the process of petroleum formation is same that of uh, coal that's the reason why it is also known as fossil fuel all right because the fuel is obtained from fossils fossils are dead remains of plants and animals that gets deposited in the earth surface in different layers over the years that's the reason why petroleum is also known as fossil fuel now petroleum is a very important mineral oil and what is petroleum it is actually a compound which is known as hydrocarbons now what are hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are compounds which majorly consist of carbon and hydrogen so apart from that there can be other elements also other atoms also silicon sulfur other different atoms can be there but basically in hydrocarbons you have read in your chemistry chapters that it consists of um, hydrogen and carbon so moving forward petroleum has actually derived from a latin word a uh, two latin word actually it is petra and oleum petra means rock and oleum means oil why rock because these are deposits deposited in the earth surface uh, over the over millions of years that's the reason why it is known as petroleum or even rock oil now petroleum in its crude form is black in color but when it, it gets starts to get refined um, undergo starts to undergo various processes it uh, appears to be golden or different colors in kerosene what happens uh, blue earlier blue color used to be added in kerosene but uh, generally crude oil is uh, black in color but although crude oil or petroleum is black in color it is also known as liquid gold why because again of its value just like coal is known as black diamond petroleum is known as liquid gold because of its variety purposes variety of variety of uses that we see in our daily lives so petroleum has got so, got a very huge economic and strategic value now all right it is where it is used mainly it is used in transport 
you already know uh, transport industries and apart from transport industries petroleum is also got has got many purposes uh, in many industries like dyes fertilizers synthetic rubber for your exams they might ask you the uses of petroleum uh, so for that you'll have to write um, majorly it is used in transport industries apart from that where it is used it is used as raw materials on and in raw materials in various um, chemical industries like in dye synthetic rubber synthetic fiber then what is petroleum it is an important mineral oil composed of hydrocarbons so a variety of questions can be formed so for your uh, reference i have given you pictures of how synthetic fibers are there like natural fibers uh, examples of natural fibers are that of uh, jute and then cotton these are the examples of natural fibers for synthetic fibers petroleum is used in the picture you can see like nylon is the synthetic fiber then it is used in drugs and now drug doesn't means um, doesn't simply means uh, that uh, which they show it on the movies drug addicts they are like uh, they do not have any sense drugs in general means medicines okay and then in chemical fertilizer fertilizers also petroleum is used moving forward uh, let's now discuss where in india petroleum is found now in india the largest production of petroleum is seen in mumbai see on the india map you can see it is near to mumbai in the arabian sea and the place is known as the bombay high now the bombay high it is the largest reserve of petroleum in india it is the largest producer of crude oil coming second is that of gujarat because gujarat see even gujarat is lying next to arabian sea so one thing uh, you all could notice is gujarat and uh, mumbai both of them are lying that gujarat and maharashtra both of them are lying nearby the arabian sea and um, so the sea they have more deposits of uh, these organic matter coal or petroleum so from the seabed they can be extracted out so bombay comes bombay high comes first and secondly that uh, that is uh, gujarat coming third is that of assam followed by andhra pradesh and tamil nadu now what happens actually in assam was the place a place in assam called makum was a place where petroleum was first discovered in india but over the years it has changed bombay high maybe these states are more developed than assam so these states like bombay and gujarat they are able to extract more of oil from uh, their uh, seabeds however for the first time it was discovered in assam and the major oil fields are big boy nahar kotia muhar uh, moran hugrijan hibohagar and rudrasagar these are the places in assam from where crude oil is extracted out now i am also from assam that's the reason why the pronunciation of these uh, districts uh, i can do more uh, uh, pronunciation of these names i can do better like big boy nahar kotia that's the uh, way we pronounce it in assamese so for distributions the major petroleum or crude oil areas in india is bombay high first second is gujarat followed by assam and then andhra pradesh and tamil nadu you can make one acronym to remember the names see the picture of uh, bombay high is also given on the slide for your reference uh, so moving forward uh, yeah for your exams remember that they can ask you where bombay high is located all right so you'll have to locate it near mumbai so the name of mumbai the old name of mumbai is uh, bombay so nearby mumbai you will locate it in the arabian sea where bombay high is located all right so the other oil fields apart from that of uh, we have discussed bombay gujarat assam so apart from that andhra pradesh and tamil nadu were also there so it are uh, the other oil fields are located in godavari krishna and uh, kaveri river now india imports even after having so many states that are capable of producing crude oil that are capable of extracting crude oil from the earth india still is export uh, Im importing a large quantity of petroleum from other countries because the amount that we are producing in our country is not sufficient so can you tell which are the major countries that supply petroleum to india that is your homework 
please comment if any of you know the answer which is that or which are the countries that uh, supply petroleum to india comment it on the comment box i'll be more than happy if you all know but for your reference know that india even though having uh, many states that are producing crude oil it imports a lot of petroleum in large quantities from uh, other countries to meet its requirements to your hint i will give you the, from the countries where india imports its petroleum is generally from the middle east countries now you'll have only have to give me the names of the middle east countries from where india imports its petroleum or meets its petroleum requirements so we have discussed two conventional or non-renewable resources which are used in india now we'll discuss one non-conventional or, or renewable resource of india which is that of hydroelectricity now what is hydroelectricity hydro means water that means in hydroelectricity water is used to generate energy all right or generate energy in the form of electricity now some of uh, some of you might uh, question that uh, india is a country uh, where a lot of states is facing uh, water uh, scarcity drinking water problem then why in india ele hydroelectricity is supported that's a one reason that one point can be one of the challenges that is faced in india in the industry of hydroelectricity but india as a country has a lot of uh, water bodies rivers are present where this scarcity problem might not arise and in fact this resource can be utilized very properly to generate electricity so on the picture it is given that when the river is flowing from a high slope it comes down and then it rotates the turbine this you all will study in your science chapter how the motor works how the generator works and how it generates electricity from water so now hydroelectricity is one of the non-conventional power resources in india and what are the, the one of the major advantages of using hydroelectricity is because it's given on the slide it is renewable it is it it has no limit it is cheaper for setting up the whole infrastructure of hydroelectricity hydroelectricity is costly but after that it becomes quite cheaper and it has got um, it is a cleaner kind of power resources it keeps the environment clean pollution free that's the reason why this is one of the major major advantages of using uh, hydroelectric city now in fact the first time when these dams hydroelectricity um, projects were taken it was taken during the time of uh, pandit jawahar lal nehru and nehru in fact said that dams are the temples of modern india so nehru in fact uh, was a visionary who saw the great uh, capacity the great uh, capability or the source uh, the capacity of hydroelectricity uh, resources this hydropower that holds that can provide electricity to a large mass in india india is very a populated country so a lot of um, power resources power energy crisis in india can be solved if hydroelectricity electricity is used in place of other conventional uh, power resources so uh, dams were called as the temples of modern india now india is uh, what is the need of uh, hydro electricity or hydropower as i've already said that india these uh, conventional power resources have its limitations and india as a country has a very adequate amount of fossil fuels such as coal oil or natural gases that's the reason why hydroelectricity or hydropower is a uh, need or requirement in india and in fact india as a country has a very favorable uh, climate for these power resources because the climate of india is not very cold so what happens is rivers during winters even will not freeze therefore they will even in winters they will flow from the slope they will flow down and they will be uh, they will be able to generate electricity even in 
even during winters. That's the reason why India has favorable factors for development of hydro power. Now, when in India, uh, the first time hydroelectricity power was installed, it was in Darjeeling. Remember this for your exams. It was in Darjeeling in West Bengal in the year 1897 when first hydroelectricity power in India was set up. <laughs> but the real uh, generation or the real hydroelectricity power in India which generates a lot of electricity is actually seen in your state that is Karnataka and where is it? It is because of the river of Kaveri in the place called Shivanas, sorry, Shivanas Mundar, uh, Mudram is the place where uh, on the Kaveri river where hydroelectricity power generation is majorly seen because uh, in huge amount, although it was not the first uh, elect uh, hydroelectricity power plant that was set up in India, but this was the place where uh, it is generating a lot of uh, electricity and which is uh, fulfilling the needs, energy need of a lot of people. All right. Okay. So moving forward for the distribution, this you'll have to just remember for your exams. I keep on saying for the names you have to have some memory power to remember the names for Karnataka I'll just read it out the names of the districts where hydroelectricity is found for Karnataka it is Shivanasa, Mudram, Shimsa, Sharavati, Linganamakki, Allamati, Varahi, Kali and Bhadra see I'm from northeastern place uh, I'm from Assam that's the reason why I'm uh, finding a little difficult to pronounce these names please do not make fun of your teacher just understand for exams, just remember the names of the districts because that is more important for exams. So in Tamil Nadu, moving forward, it is Matur, Paikara, Papanasam, Periyar, Moyar, Kunda, Seruliyar, Kudayar, Solayar, Maharashtra, Koyana, Kupuli, Bhula, Vimpuri and Bhira. And in Urissa, it is Hirakund, Bhimkud, Balimela and Regeli. Now for exams, or uh, for your uh, fun fact, let me ask you, can any one of you tell me which is the largest dam in India and uh, which was the dam uh, after seeing Nehru for the first time when he saw, uh, when he took the initiative to build a dam in India, when he said that dams are the temples of modern India, which was the dam he was talking about? So these are your two homeworks that you can go and search on the internet. You will find out which is the largest dam in India and the dam Nehru was talking about. All right. So moving forward in Andhra Pradesh, it is Sri Salyam, Rapa, pa, Rama, Padasagar and Sileru. Telangana, it is Nizam, uh, Nizam Sagar. Nagarjuna Sagar, Pochampad and in Kerala it is Idaki, Sabargiri, Palivasar and Parambikulam. So other than these states, it is also found in Ukai, Kandana in Gujarat, Sabar, Narakya, Maithan, Tilea, Panchayat Hills in Jharkhand and Bhakranagal in Punjab, Kosi in Bihar, Gandhi Sagar in Madhya Pradesh. See, a lot of hydro power plants are set up in India. So, a lot of electricity that is generated in India is from these hydro power plants, which makes India, in fact, the fifth larger hydro power capacity. All right. So, India holds the position of fifth in terms of hydroelectricity, which is a very uh, which is a thing to be applauded or feel grateful for because uh, these, as I've already mentioned, the advantages of hydro powers that uh, they are creating less pollutions. However, there are various challenges that comes all together with that of hydro power. Like, for example, many um, rallies or protests are done when these hydroelectricity power plants are uh, government plans to set up these power plants because uh, it leads to... Uh, loss of settlements of uh, various people so the people who are staying nearby the river area where dams would be uh, situated or built they are displaced from these areas so a lot of protests are held uh, one very fine example of uh, in india where uh, the dams building of dam was protested was in narmada and the andolan was known as the narmada uh, bachao andolan and uh, many celebrities even come came in support of these andolan uh, so the social activities i think it was uh, megha padkar was there who supported uh, the narmada bachao andolan along with that even amir khan came to support the narmada bachao andolan to support the 
settlers or the people who were set, uh, staying nearby the Narmada river and uh, they were against the building of dam in the Narmada river. So moving forward, now let's discuss the last uh, power resources uh, in India, which is the nuclear power, all right? Now, nuclear power is sort of new power resource and it is very interesting. It is related to science, physics. So what happens in nuclear power plant is, now there are energy which are present in some nuclear atoms. These are radioactive atoms and a lot of energy are present in these, in the nucleus of this atom. Do you know the structure of atoms? There is one nucleus and then electrons revolve around the nucleus. The picture is given. The picture is that of one, two, three, four. Four electrons are there. Can any one of you tell me which is this atom? All right. So what happens is a lot of energy is stored in the nucleus. So when this nucleus is broken down, a lot of energy is generated if these are nuclear atoms. So this breaking of nuclear atom is known as fission. And sometimes what happens in uh, two nuclear atoms, they can come together and um, even when coming together, they can generate a lot of energy and that process is known as fusion. In science, you will learn how nuclear reactions takes place. But here we are majorly going to discuss about fission. What happens in fission, uh, fission is that the nuclear atom like uranium or thorium, the atom, it is uh, broken down with the process of fission and the splitting of uranium atoms, it releases a lot of energy. In fact, the amount of energy that is released from nuclear reaction it's much much more than that is generated from other resources like that of even conventional resources like coal or petroleum or non-conventional resources like even hydro hydro power all right so the distribution in india the first nuclear plant was set up in maharashtra which is in uh, a place in Tarapur which is in Maharashtra in the year 1969. So Tarapur is the place where first nuclear power plant in India is situated. For your reference I have given you one picture of Tarapur atomic power station which is in Maharashtra and uh, secondly I would like you to focus on the point that the first nuclear reactor in the world in sorry in Asia was in fact set up in India in Mumbai, which is which was in which is Apsara Research Reactor. Now where is that present? It is present in Bab Bab Atomic Research Center in Mumbai. This was the first nuclear reactor, in fact, and all over Asia. Now can any one of you tell me Baba Atomic Research Center? It is named after which person? It is named after a very famous nuclear physicist. This is a person. So the person name is Homi Bhabha. Now Homi Bhabha was a nuclear physicist in India. He is also known as the father of Indian nuclear programs. So he's a person who was the founding member of BARC. Actually at that time BARC had a other name. It was known as AEET. I don't remember the full form properly, but now it is renamed as Bar Baba Atomic Research Center. So the Homi Baba had uh, played a very important role in setting up nuclear power plant in India. All right. Now, nuclear power plant has got many advantages. All right. We'll discuss about what are the advantages that are present in nuclear power plant along with the challenges that comes in the nuclear power plant. For example, also remember the names of the nuclear power plant that are present in India. There are basically seven, Tarapur, Rana Pratap Sagar, Kalpakam, Narora, Kakrapara, Kaiga and Kundan. These are the power plants, nuclear power plants in India. Seven are there, remember the names. But uh, these, uh, this is, uh, these all depend on your memory power. But for your understanding, uh, I'm going to explain you what are the benefits and challenges that are present with uh, nuclear power. So the benefits majorly is that it is cleaner. Cleaner energy means it produces less amount of pollution because in coal or petroleum, you will see a lot of pollutions, air pollutants are released in the air. However, this doesn't happen in case of hydro power plant or in case of nuclear power plant. So it is clean 
it is very reliable because it produces a huge huge amount of power and it creates jobs because a lot of people are hired so it supports national security so a lot of economic development is also along with that of the advantages which is present in the environment but there is a lot of challenges that comes along with that of a nuclear power plant one is majorly is that of public awareness because what happens if the public is not aware of nuclear reactions or the dangerous of these uh, nuclear uh, atoms what happens they can get exposed and it uh, can lead to a lot of uh, fatalities a lot of deaths or even diseases even in in fact there was a very famous nuclear accident that happened in a nuclear power plant which was in chernobyl uh, at that time it was in uh, chernobyl 1986 in russia ussr right so in Chernobyl, uh, the nuclear power disaster or the accident happened in 1986 and a lot of the countries that, uh, that were situated nearby this area, um, Chernobyl, were uh, affected by the nuclear power uh, accident a lot of that's happened even now people who were exposed uh, to the accident were uh, having uh, a lot of genetical diseases genetic diseases were inherited they were passed on to a lot of generations later and it is a huge huge disaster that a lot of countries condemned and that happened in 1986 so why it happened it had some technical issues but if people were made aware of the dangers of coming across a nuclear uh, when nuclear reaction accident happens then a lot of uh, diseases or deaths could have been stopped but people at that time did not knew what are what were the dangers uh, what are the challenges which are uh, related with the nuclear power reactions and that's why a lot of people uh, were suffering for a long amount of time and uh, the future generations were also affected because of that so one of the major challenge is that of public awareness and secondly it is very expensive the cost is very high to set up the power uh, plant uh, in a place it needs high equipment it needs high uh, labor intensive labor is needed all right and then it can also lead to the production of radioactive waste that is one of the challenges and then Lastly is limited fuel supply because the amount of uh, uranium or thorium is so very less. All right. It is very limited. Now, now we will discuss what are the challenges that are present uh, in uh, why is the need of a non-conventional power resources. The need of non-conventional power resources is because even though india is having a lot of conventional resources coal petroleum is there there is a need of uh, non-conventional power resources because the demand of uh, power there is an energy crisis in india and the demand of power is very much more than that of the production because there is the limited supply of uh, resources i've already mentioned it on the slides shortage of petroleum coal poor quality oil these are the reasons then um, erratic rainfall loss of power in transmission these are the reasons why conventional resources are have limitations they have got challenges and these are the reasons why there is a need of other energy resources or power resources that we need it so what is the remedy in place of conventional resources what we can use we can use non-conventional resources like solar wind hydro or nuclear power and what it does so uh, apart from using of non-conventional power resources because India has got a very abundant amount of non-conventional power resources the other remedies can uh, also be uh, increasing the production of petroleum and coal but however you increase it uh, there is always a limit to the extent or the amount of these conventional resources that are present in earth or you can produce um, there can be other substitutes for oil and coal then greater uh, increased waste power generation and lastly as we have i have already discussed is the greater use of non-conventional sources of energy because india as a country has got an abundance of uh, non-conventional power resources so with this we have come to the end of the chapter we have completed mineral 
and power resources of India successfully. So, if you have enjoyed this class with me, for more of geography classes, to learn more of geography in a fun way, please come to Vistas Learning. Thank you.